In this video, we're going to focus on learning how to draw the Lewis structures for covalent compounds. We've already discussed and practiced drawing Lewis structures for ionic compounds. This will be a little bit different, so please make sure you follow along and you write down the rules as we go through. We will do a number of different um, practice problems in class to make sure you really understand what's going on with covalent Lewis structures. So to, um, to determine Lewis structures, we will be using the valence electrons from the dot diagrams. We won't necessarily be drawing them the way we did with ionics, but we're going to be using the total number of valence electrons for each uh, type of element based on their dot diagrams. The atomic symbols will represent the nuclei and the inner shell electrons. We're going to use dashes to represent our bonds. In each dash will be two electrons. Very important for you to keep that in mind, that the dash means there's two electrons there. Any other extra electrons will be depicted with dots, just like our Lewis dot diagrams. So here you're going to see each fluorine has seven electrons, and around each fluorine, the seven will line up to where two will share between, and that will create a single bond, which will be a dash, one dash. The other electrons that are left are called the lone pair, or unshared pair of electrons, and these are the electrons that will not be involved in bonding and belong to one single atom. They are not shared among the bonded um, atoms in that compound. Let's review the rules for writing covalent Lewis structures. Make sure you write these down and write down all of the examples in your notes. The first thing you want to do is you want to sum up the valence electrons for all atoms. I have two examples here, CCl4 and CO2. Let's look at CCl4 um, first. In CCl4, that means that we have one carbon and four chlorine. In every carbon atom, there are four valence electrons. In every chlorine atom, there is seven valence electrons. We are going to add up and find the total number of valence electrons. Four from carbon. There are four chlorines, each of them giving seven electrons, so there's a total of 28. And if you add 28 and 4, we have a total of 32 electrons that will be in our uh, Lewis structure. We can do the same thing for CO2. Carbon has four valence electrons. Oxygen has six valence electrons, but there's two of them based on our subscript. So that means there's a total of 12 electrons from the oxygens. In C uh, CO2 or carbon dioxide, there are 16 total electrons. If you are drawing a Lewis structure for a charged group of covalently bonded uh, atoms, which is called a polyatomic ion. For any anion, and remember anions, this is negative, you're going to add an electron to the total number of electrons that you added up. So for CO3, 2 minus, we have 4 electrons from carbon, we have six electrons from each oxygen, and there's three, so that's a total of 18. Adding those together, we get 22. But because there's a minus two charge, that means that we are negative two more times, so we're going to add two electrons, and we have a total of 24 electrons for CO3, two minus. Now for a cation, which is a positive ion, that means we've lost an electron, we're going to subtract an electron from the total number. So here we have five electrons from nitrogen, one electron from each hydrogen, which is four, so we have a total of nine electrons. But because the charge on NH4 is a plus one, that means we've lost an electron, giving us a total of eight electrons in the Lewis structure. I would suggest that every time that you begin a covalent Lewis structure, you go through and write out the math, calculating the total number of electrons. And I will be checking this as we go through and practice 
this type of drawing. After you have your total number of electrons, now you're going to write the symbols of the atoms to show which atoms are attached to which, and you're going to connect them with a single bond or a dash. Chemical formulas are often written in order of the atoms um, and the way that they are connected. So for example, HCN, C is the center. Other times, the first element will be your center atom. If you have something like CO2 or CCl4, carbon will be your center. Anytime you have carbon in a compound, it most likely will be your center uh, atom. You're going to write your center atom, HCN, and then attach the H and the N to the carbon with a dash. See the dashes here? That's the single bond. Same thing with the CO2. Attach each oxygen to the carbon with a dash. And then with CCl4, attach each chlorine to the carbon with a single bond, a dash. Once you have all of your elements connected with bonds, single bonds, now you're going to go to the outside elements, the ones attached to the central atom, and you're going to fill their octets. So we're going to make sure that the chlorine has eight electrons around it. So you're going to put six electrons around chlorine, and then the two in the single bond make eight. So we have two, four, two, four, six, eight around this chlorine. And you want to do that for each element attached to the central atom. We have two, four, six, eight. Two, four, six, eight. Two, four, six, eight. So all of the chlorines have eight electrons around them. Then you want to count them up. How many did you place? If you go around the entire compound, each chlorine has 8. 8 times 4 is 32. So we've put 32 electrons in our compound. Same thing over here. When you look at CO2, you're going to fill each oxygen with 8 electrons. 2, 4, 6, 8. 2, 4, 6, 8. Each of them have 8 in the oxygens. And we've placed 8 and 8 is 16, so we've placed 16. So that is our next rule. One thing to keep in mind, though, hydrogen will only have two electrons in it. Hydrogen is 1s1, remember from electron configuration? So that means it can only take on one more electron. After you've filled all the outer elements with valence electrons, now you're going to place any leftover electrons on the central atom, even if doing so makes there are more than eight electrons around that central atom. So you're going to compare the total number of electrons that you calculated in rule number one with the number of electrons that you used in rule number three. For CCL4, there was a total of 32 electrons that we counted up based on the number of uh, um, atoms of each element. When we filled the octets of chlorine in rule number three, we used 32. So there are no additional leftover electrons to be placed. If there were, they would be placed here on the central atom. You want to make sure that um, all the electrons that you calculated in rule number one are used. And that's the only other way that you're going to be able to do that, is any leftover being placed on your central atom. After you've filled the octets, compared the number of electrons used versus how many were placed, the final step is to make sure that your central atom is now stable with eight electrons around it. Your central atom still wants to have an octet. So if there are not enough to give the central atom an octet, what you're going to do is start making multiple bonds. So here, for example, in our CO2, we had 16 total electrons that we could place. We placed all 16, making sure oxy each oxygen had 8 around it. 
But if you check out your carbon, you only have two, four electrons now surrounding carbon, and it still needs to have eight. What ends up happening is that two sets of electrons from one oxygen will be shared now between carbon and oxygen, and two electrons will be shared with the other oxygen and carbon. And what this ends up doing is making what is called a double bond because there's more electrons being shared between carbon and oxygen. We'll practice all these rules a number of times in class. It's important that you have them written down, that you have the example. We'll start out the class uh, going through one or two together. And the more you follow these rules and you use the same process every time that you draw a Lewis structure for covalent compounds, the easier um, it will be for you. So I will see you in class. Make sure you bring your notes.